Hi, I'm Steve. Python is a great general purpose programming language and it's one of the most popular languages in the world right now. It's widely used in many different fields and industries and some of the most common uses are for data science and data visualization, web development, scientific computing, and automation for email and web scraping, as well as AI and machine learning. So we're going to write our first Python program that does more than just Hello World. I'm going to show you how to collect user input, uh, convert data types, perform advanced calculations, and create a reusable function all within a few minutes. So getting your development environment can be a little tricky when you're starting out. So stick around to the end of the video where I share a secret where you can literally start within a few seconds without having to set anything up and get access to some amazing free learning content. Let's get started. All right, so the program that we're gonna write is going to calculate compound interest. And so this is a great way of calculating, you know, like say retirement savings or what an investment could look like several years down the road. So it's a, it's a real formula and it's uh, certainly useful in everyday use. So I'm here on this website where they calculate this for us so let's actually run through an example and then we'll recreate this in Python. So let's start with our principal amount. Let's start with say $1,000 and let's say an annual interest rate or an annual rate of 4% and this is gonna be compounding on an annual basis and let's see what this value is in five years. So let's calculate that. And here it's telling us that um, our principal plus interest is going to be uh, equal to $1,216. Okay, so they provide this formula for us, and it's actually fairly complex. So the accrued principal plus interest is equal to your principal amount times 1 plus the annual rate divided by the number of periods and that is taken to the power of the number of periods times uh, how, many, uh, how many times it compounds in a year. So in our case, it's just one. So let's start by collecting user inputs within the program. So this can be a reusable program. So in our Python file, we're going to get our user inputs. So this is just a comment just to know what we're trying to accomplish here. So the first thing that we want to collect is the principal amount. What are we starting with? And so uh, we're going to start with input, enter the principal amount. Right. And what does this do? What does this input do? It's actually going to collect uh, uh, user input from our terminal. So let's actually quickly test this out. So let's print out what information that we collect. So let's print the principal. And uh, we're storing that in that variable called principal. And let's write this, let's execute this program. So here we're saying we're getting prompted enter the principal amount. So I'm going to type in, oh, let's say 1000. And we see that the program spits out 1000. So uh, we know that we are able to collect user input by using this uh, input function. So let's go ahead and collect uh, the rest of the user inputs to calculate this formula. So the next thing we need to know, what is the interest rate? So interest rate is equal to input, enter the interest rate as a decimal. Let me go ahead and fix this input right here. Okay, next thing we need is the time period. And that is going to be input and the last thing we need is the compounding frequency. Okay, so before we get any further, we need to 
do some data conversion uh, on these variables. So one of the things about Python is that uh, everything that's collected from this input function from a user prompt uh, is collected as a string, but these are all numbers, specifically float numbers, the meaning that they have decimal values versus integers, which are just whole, whole values, which can be positive or negative. So to do a data conversion here, we want to convert these to floats, to float numbers. So this is a float data type, and we're going to do this for each one of our variables. Okay, so we've got um, all four of these numeric values that are collected. So let's actually calculate the amount. So we're going to create a new variable called amount, and we're going to recreate that formula, uh, that APR formula that we see, or sorry, and we're going to recreate th this compound interest formula that we see here on this website. So let's actually let me scoot this over so we can actually refer to it as we are programming. So that amount, which is going to be the principal plus interest, is equal to, let's see, principal uh, times, and so when we want to multiply, we use one asterisk, and that is going to be one plus the interest rate divided by the compounding frequency. And that needs to be raised to the power of compounding frequency times time period. Okay. And let's test this out. So let's print amount. And let's run this program. All right, so we're asking for the principal amount, and let's actually match the inputs that we uh, that we started with in the website example. So, principal amount is one thousand. Interest rate is four percent. So we're going to enter it that as 0 0.04. The time period um, is going to be five years, and the compounding frequency. Uh, we're only going to be compounding annually, so that's going to be 1. And so we see that our value here of 1,216.65 uh, is the same as what we got on the website. So that's good progress. However, there's two things that we want to do now. First one is uh, we want to round this off to uh, you know uh, two places on the right of the decimal. So we're showing in dollars and cents. Uh, and then we also want to show and, and uh, you know, have a friendly message to say, you know, this is what your amount is. So as we do that, let's actually start creating our first function. So if we're building a larger program, what we want to do is create a function. If we anticipate and we're going to be using this, this logic more, uh, more than once and different areas of code are going to be calling this. So we're going to create a reusable function. The way that we do that is uh, we start off with the keyword DEF, and why don't we call this uh, calc, uh, calc interest, and uh, it ends here with a colon, and what we need here in these parentheses are input parameters for this function. So we're going to pass in the principal interest rate, time period, and the frequency all those things that we need to execute the formula. Now, you notice that every single uh, uh, piece of uh, code within that function is going to be indented a couple of spaces, and that's, uh, you know, that's unique to Python. Other languages might have curly braces. Here in Python, it's done by indentation. So then let's actually take our formula here and we're going to actually move it here 
into the function because it's going to be reused more than once. So we're just interested in this case of only returning the amount of interest. So we're going to create a new variable called interest amount and that is equal to the total amount minus the principal. And so that's going to return only the amount of interest that was accrued. And so this function is going to return this number of interest amount. Okay. And so here, let's go ahead and print our output. So let's create another variable here called maybe uh, total interest. And that is equal to calc interest. So we're calling our function, which is returning a number. So calc interest, and we're going to pass in principal interest rate time period and the compounding frequency. All right. So we're passing in these values that we're collecting from, from the user input. And then now we're going to print total interest. But we're going to make it a friendly message. So we're going to start with some basic text to say total interest accrued is. And we want to show this in dollars and cents and not have uh, a lot of numbers to the right of the decimal point. So one thing that we can do here is use uh, one of the functions built into Python, and that is round it. So round it up. And we'll add two to the hundredths of uh, uh, to the nearest number. All right. So let's run this again. Let's run the same numbers down here in the terminal. Interest rate, so 0.04 to be 4%. The time period is five years. The compounding frequency uh, is annually, so we're going to say one. And we see that we have our total interest accrued is $216.65, which is the same thing here on this website. So the beauty of this, uh, the way that we built this program is that we can reuse this multiple times. We don't have to change the numbers specifically within, uh, within the program to rerun it. So to prove that is that we can just go to our terminal and run this program from our terminal. So let's try uh, let's try something bigger, $10,000, and let's say 5% interest, and let's do this over 20 years and compounded uh, just once per year, and we'll see that our total interest accrued is uh, over $16,000, so let's match that up here, uh, 5%, and over 20 years. and we get the exact same value. So congratulations. We just wrote our first Python program together and we got a little smarter about finance. If you enjoyed this video, help us out by liking and subscribing and tell us in the comments if you want us to explore any other languages or topics. Come visit us at educative.io where we have over 600 courses spanning programming languages, web development, data science, and system design and interview prep that provide pre-built dev environments that let you code directly in the browser so you don't have to configure anything. Thanks for listening, and maybe check out one of these videos next. Thanks.